Hello Internet, this is an aside from my How Do You Make the Best Bass Speakers in the World Even Better series explaining about thermal effects in loudspeakers. So here we have a loudspeaker, this is the voice coil, this is what the electricity flows through and generates an electromagnetic field that then pushes against the magnet in your speaker and makes the cone move backwards and forwards and makes sound. Unfortunately most speakers are very inefficient 1% efficiency is fairly typical for a high efficiency speaker. So you put 100 watts in, you get 99 watts of heat to deal with, but only one watt of sound. So that heat is a problem and things get hot very quickly. You can see that this is not a lot of metal. This heats up fast. This isn't like a car radiator or a radiator in a house. This is a small amount of metal that heats up fast, gets hot fast, and when it's hot, that changes how the speaker behaves. Which is why, in our new Big Baby 3 and Big Twin 3, we've gone up another level in terms of trying to deal with the thermal effects of a loudspeaker to make the tone more consistent. So, power equals voltage squared divided by resistance. Now, you don't need to know what the voltage is. What you need to realise is that if the resistance goes up, power goes down. So power, resistance goes up, power goes down, power is inversely proportional to resistance. Why am I suddenly talking about resistance when I was talking about heat a moment ago? Well, voice coils tend to be made of copper or aluminium. And both those metals have what's called a thermal coefficient of resistivity. And this is typical to all metals that as they get hotter, they become worse conductors, so the resistance increases. Now, modern loudspeakers can run to very high temperatures, 250 degrees Celsius or so. What's that in Fahrenheit? 400, 500, something like that. I don't know. I'm British and I was born in 1978, so I don't understand Fahrenheit. Well, I have to sit and work out Fahrenheit. Um, I can do imperial measurements in other ways, inches, feet, miles, yards, pounds, but uh, Fahrenheit confuses me. But anyway, this coil gets hot, the resistance goes up, when the resistance goes up, the power of your amp effectively goes down. When a speaker is running hard and up near its temperature limit, so you're putting maximum power or thereabouts into it, the resistance is roughly doubled. So your 8 ohm speaker or your 8 ohm cab becomes a 16 ohm cab and therefore your 400 watt amp becomes a 200 watt amp because we're doubling the resistance, which means we're halving the amount of power the amp can put out. So obviously that makes things quieter. But the other thing it does is it changes a key parameter in the speaker's behavior. And that is the QES uh, written down here. QES is the electrical damping. It's actually the inverse of the electrical damping. So Q is this quality figure that we use. And high Q means minimally damped and low Q means heavily damped. Now, when you design a loudspeaker cabinet, the total Q, which is QTS, is a combination of the QES and the QMS. QES is electrical Q, and did I say QMS or QES? Anyway, the one with an E in is electrical, the one with an M in is mechanical. So your mechanical Q relates to your suspension. So that's this spider here. This is obviously really damaged and pulled apart. And this here. And your electrical Q relates to how this voice coil interacts with the motor. Now, when you're designing a loudspeaker, you put it in a box, if it is a high Q loudspeaker, you need to put it in a sealed box. If you put it in a ported box, it will sound boomy. If you put it in a sealed box, you will basically damp the speaker and that will make up for the fact that the speaker has low internal damping, low inherent damping. If you put it in a ported box, you'll end up with a boomy sound because it's not sufficiently damped. So when you play a note, the note will start late and stop late. You'll end up with this sort of wooliness in the lows and you'll end up with a hump in low frequency response. So 
this marked line here with the sort of dashed bit, this is what will happen if you put a high Q speaker in a ported enclosure. This is what you will hear in a lot of cheap bass combos because they use a cheap speaker and then they put it in a ported enclosure to get a bit more output and that gives you a humping response and a certain boominess. If you put that high Q speaker in an appropriately designed sealed cab, you can end up with this much more ideal response curve, so the unmarked line here. If you get a lower Q speaker, and then put that in a well-designed ported cab, so you make it big enough, you don't tune the port too high or too low, so a properly designed ported cab with a speaker that's appropriate for it, you can again get this fairly ideal line. So that can be achieved in a sealed cab or a ported cab. It's a lot more work to do it right in a ported cab, but that's what we aim to do. However, when you play really loud and get your voice coils hot, the RE, so RE is the, it's the same as this R here, but when we're writing these electrical formulae, it's just called R. RE is a specific parameter of a speaker, so it's the DC resistance of the speaker. It's not the impedance, it's the DC component of the impedance. When you play loud, it gets hot, the RE goes up, and when the RE goes up, the QES also goes up. When the QES goes up, the self-damping drops. And when the self-damping drops, this is what happens to the sound. So this hump is what happens to your great sounding cab when you play really loud and get it hot. So you'll notice that this line is lower, that's because the resistance has gone up and that's reduced the power output of your amp. So everything's got quieter, because it's all got quieter apart from this bit, where basically it's become resonant and boomy. So you get this thick, boomy muddiness and the transient response becomes worse because it's a resonant thing. Instead of the speaker starting and stopping precisely, it's got this woo floppy thing. You will all have heard this, and you won't necessarily have realised this is what you're hearing, but you've heard it. This is the sound of bad tone at a loud gig, towards the end of a gig. Yeah, it particularly gets bad when everything's getting hot and the speaker's just not finding a way to keep cool. So, this is why we've put a lot of work into all our cabs over the years, in trying to minimise power compression. And I would say this is, this is power compression, this bit. This is the bit that doesn't get talked about enough because it isn't really compression, it's a change in parameters which causes a loss in damping and a, a loss of control of the speaker in these upper bass, low mid-range frequencies. Maybe not low mid-range, maybe it's more. It's mid-bass, upper bass. It's that boomy, mistuned ported boombox sound. It's not a good sound, we don't want it, so we want to ensure that if we're trying to make an even better speaker cab, we find a way to keep the voice calls cool. So I will explain more about that in the, in the next video, but I've also shown some of the prototyping in the previous video. But this thing happens, happens to every speaker on the planet. When it gets hot, this happens to it. Whatever the enclosure is like, um, however fancy it is, whatever metal the voice calls are made of, whatever materials are involved, you can't escape this thermal coefficient of resistivity and how the change in voice call resistance affects the tone and performance when you're playing loud. So yeah, hopefully I've explained that. I thought this would be more succinct, it hasn't been. Let me know if you understand, let me know what more you want to know, and next video that I do, well maybe not. Who knows what I'll do next, but there is more to say about the new Big Baby 3 and Big Twin 3 because they are really, really, really awesome. So thank you. I've been Alex from Bareface. I'll be back at some point soon, I hope.